Hi, this is LJ Botho, and this is a video in Microsoft Word on headers and footers. And hopefully we'll keep it really short. This information should uh, translate on regardless of operating system, even though you may have to look in a different place um, on a Mac or a Linux machine. But what headers and footers are, uh, they tend to be information that's repeatable from page to page on a document, somewhere between the top of where your text is and the edge of the page. Now, how do you get to a header and footer? Here's one key way. If you are in your document's uh, page layout view, print layout view, you can come close to the top, not right there, and double click, and suddenly you'll find yourself in an editable space called header that you weren't aware probably was there. And this allows you to type something in here, like my name. And then I can you know, make it bigger using my home tab and come in and you know, change the size of things and make it bold, etc. And what will happen, I'm going to exit this by double clicking on the editable space where my normal text is. And you can see how this is a bit grayed out now. That means this header is here, but I can't edit it until I double click on it again. And get inside. Then this is grayed out and I can't edit the rest of my document until I double click and get into it. So I'm going to scroll down. Notice how on page two there's my name. I think there are only two pages. That's just fine. So that is how you could put a header in, but you can actually do more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm actually going to go into my home tab styles, click normal, close the styles, and then I'm just going to delete this. I just want the space to be normal again. What I want to do is go into, let's double click out of the header. I want to go to my insert tab and look for header and footer area. So we have actually a whole area dedicated in our insert tab, header and footer group. In the header, you have the chance to actually choose some pre-built options, or you can edit it and make um, some choices yourself. So let's take a look at edit header. Oh, it just puts it in there. However, here's what's really cool and what I did not show you while I was in the header before. Microsoft likes to put up uh, contextual menus for various things, like when you insert items or when you use a header and a footer um, and, probably, and when you use references, a few other things like that. This menu slash ribbon did not exist when I was not in the header and footer. So if I were to double click outside into my editable text, suddenly there's no more contextual header and footer ribbon um, up there. If I double click into the header again, there it is. And in it, there are several things I can add into a header that Microsoft has coded to be able to be dynamic. So as my page of opens, if I were to put a current date on it, it would show the current date when I open the page. When I close the document, save it, save it, close it, go do something and come back two days later, open the document, it would show the current date again. I could also um, add document information. So what is the document called? Well, let's see, I could put the author's name. Oh, here's the document title. So I'm clicking document. I'm in the header and footer tab. I'm in the insert group. I'm going to click document info and I'm going to put document title. And it gives me this field that will become active when I'm out of the header. If the document has a title. Did I ever give the document a title? I didn't. Hmm. Well, let's go in and do the file name. There we go. So in this particular case, this is also a field, which you could tell when you select it because you can see a little bit of gray around it. But when you select away from it, you can't. But if I were to go and change this file name by saving the file as something else, this would change. I can also use tab and go over to the other side and add something else. So say I wanted to go add the date and time. I could click this a date and time box would pop open and I could choose a format and put it in. And there we go. Then I can close the header and footer. It will take me out of the header and footer and it will remove that contextual ribbon. And I can go down and I can see what happens. Ooh. Opposites. Yep, it's on both pages.
Now, what if I want to do something with the footer? The same thing. Say I want the page number down here at the bottom. I could double click to enter it, and then I could double click the editable part of my document to get out of it. I can go to the insert tab and go to footer, and I could use a built in footer and type something here. I'm going to undo that with Control Z. And instead, what I would like to do now that I'm in the footer, header and footer contextual menu, is I'd like to add a page number. So what I would like to do is add a bottom of the page. And I could put a plain number in the left hand side, the middle or the right hand side. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put it in the left hand side. And this is what notice when I highlight this, you can see a bit of gray that indicates it's a field. Now, something that would be really useful to do, and I'm going to control Z to back out of that, I would type the word page and then maybe a dash, and then I could add a page number. So I'm going to put it so that it's right. Oops, sorry. I want a page number at the bottom of the page. <laughs> there we are. Hey, that's not what you're supposed to do. Okay, so you're going to have a little bit of trouble, so I'm going to come here instead and do current position. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. As you can see, I make mistakes even when I'm doing videos. But now what will happen is if I scroll up to the top, I should see page one and page two. Now here's one more little tip I'm going to give you. Sometimes your very first page will be like a title page and you don't want a page number or a header um, to show up on there. In your header and footer contextual menu, you could choose a different first page. If I do that, at the bottom of page two and at the top of page two, I can see things, but at the top of page one and the bottom of page one, I can't see any of that information. You could also choose different odd and even pages if you were doing something like a book that was going to have facing pages. So that should give you enough of the basics on headers and footers. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you.